Good evening and welcome to the channel's studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. The Israeli military and Hezbollah have reported ground fighting inside southern Lebanon a day after Israel announced it was invading. The IDF says it's using precision guided munitions and close range engagements inside Lebanon. Hezbollah claims its fighters have inflicted casualties on Israeli soldiers. Earlier, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said Iran would pay after Iran fired around 180 missiles at Israel on Tuesday. Lebanese officials say more than 1,000 people have been killed in the past two weeks, while around a million may now be displaced. Meanwhile, Israeli airstrikes and a ground operation targeting the Khan Yunus area in southern Gaza have killed at least 51 people. That's according to Gaza's Hamas-run health ministry. Tanks reportedly advanced into some parts of the city and its surrounding area, with residents reporting gunfire and heavy shelling. Separately, the Israeli Defense Forces said it had struck Hamas targets located in three schools, sheltering displaced people in central and northern Gaza overnight. Hundreds of people remain missing after catastrophic flooding decimated towns, destroyed roads and cut off power for more than a million homes in the U.S. southeast. The death toll has continued to rise since Hurricane Helen, which was later downgraded to a tropical storm, tore across the region. At least 135 people have been confirmed dead across six states, a figure that is expected to grow. At least 40 of those dead were in the west of North Carolina, where 300 roads remain closed, hampering recovery operations as well as the delivery of much-needed food and water. Tim Walls and J.D. Vance have defended their respective running mates during their first and possibly only vice presidential debate. It's really rich for Democratic leaders to say that Donald Trump is a unique threat to democracy. Hosted by CBS News, the event gave the pair the chance to introduce themselves and go on the attack against the opposing ticket. Each man pointed to the crisis of the day as reasons for voters to choose their respective running mates for president. That We have to increase security in our schools. We have to make the doors lock better. We have to make the doors stronger. We've got to make the windows stronger. And of course, we've got to increase school resources officers, because the idea that we can magically wave a wand and take guns out of the hands of bad guys, it just doesn't fit with recent experience. So we've got to make our schools safer. Do you want your schools hardened to look like a fort? Is that is that what we have to go when we know there's countries around the world that their children aren't practicing these types of drills? British Prime Minister Sakir Starmer has met with the European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen for what Brussels described as a first conversation on issues like trade, security and youth mobility. Mr Starmer, whose Labour Party won in July's election, has made clear that his government won't seek wholesale negotiation of the Brexit deal that took Britain out of the bloc, but he is seeking to tweak the relationship in a range of areas. The European Union shares his desire for a joint security pact but talks on barriers to the movement of goods and people could prove more difficult. We have a lot to discuss today, and I'm very much looking forward to working with you and to continue to strengthen our relation. We are determined to put this relationship back on a stable, positive footing that I think we all want to see. A group of Russian rescuers and volunteers have saved four killer whales stranded for hours off the Kamchatka Peninsula in Russia's Far East after leading them to deeper waters. Russia's Emergency Situations Ministry had earlier warned that the whales, two orcas and two calves, were stuck in a silted estuary. That prompted more than 30 rescuers to use small boats to aid the whalers, dousing them with water as they tried to push them into deeper waters. And a huge fireworks display has taken place in Hong Kong to celebrate China's National Day. Residents and tourists watched from both sides of the Victoria Harbour for the show, which was estimated to attract around 330,000 spectators. Fireworks shaped like green bamboo leaves followed to mark the arrival of a pair of giant pandas last week, gifted by the central government and the twin cubs that were born in Hong Kong in August. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channel's studios in Lagos.